Well, another day, another few dollars spent. It is nice having this thing kind of look more and more like a car every single day at work on it. Down here, Diddy Speed Shop, 57 Chevy, four door, two door, as for doing all sorts of stuff. So if you're just new or you've, you've missed a few episodes, we got the floors in, we got the rockers in, the metal work's all done, LS motor, turbo 400. Last video, we just put on these eBay El Cheapo tubular control arms. They're pretty good. Today's video is going to be brakes. Now, I had ordered disc brakes. As you can see, them are clearly drum brakes. Way of the world. Shipping is a pain. So, supposed to be here today. Weren't. Try again tomorrow or the day after. We'll see how it goes. One thing that did show up, uh, Master Cylinder, Rock Auto, and... Uh, this got from a local speed shop, portioning valve, metering block, whatever you want to call it. I think it's metering block. Um, I think it's 50 bucks. That was like 50 bucks. This brake kit's 400. So it's not cheap, but I don't know. By time, by the time you rebuild drum brakes, it's basically the same amount of money as putting on a disc conversion. Especially if you need drums. Drums here are like 75 bucks, 100 bucks a drum. And these have old ball bearing. Uh, wheel bearings which are junk so then you have to upgrade to tapered wheel bearings off like a I don't know 60s sorry like early 60s full-size Chevy you need a different hub it's just a whole whole thing so by the time you screw around all that you got all the same amount of money this way you can have disc brakes some questions people always ask I'll address them real quick even though I do it this quite often every video so drive five Chevys have a single pot master cylinder which is junk. Upgrade to a dual. That way if you ever have brake failure, you always have at least one circuit of brakes. It is important. Uh, these do come in dual circuit drum drum, drum disc, and disc disc. So you want to make sure you know what you're getting there. I guess there's different pressures or something like that and bore size and all that sort of stuff. What I typically do, that's always worked for me, this is off a of 70 or whatever it is, Nova with front discs and rear drums, Corvettes work, I mean I'm sure full size Chevys, all that stuff. It's very, very, very similar. The bolt pattern matches this. This has four, we're only going to use two bolts, which is no big deal. We'll get that taken care of. We're going to run our lines down to this. Again, this is another thing. They sell this in, you can get one drum drum, maybe you can. But drum uh, drum disc and disc disc, again, make sure you get the right one. They're all the same price, but it all has to work out together. They do sell, uh, if you have all the wrong stuff, little inline things that change it. I, I, I don't know. Google it, Willwood. They sell all that stuff. So that's the plan. Unfortunately, we don't want disc brakes. So doing a disc brake video without disc brakes is a little funny to get started, but that's the way we're going to go. So we're going to put the master on. We're going to take this whole mess off. So on these things, it's actually pretty, pretty simple. You take off this one nut, the whole mess and hub comes off. And on the back side, there's four bolts. I'll show you that hold on the backing plate. So we're going to strip it down to a bare spindle. Because the kit I get, which I'm sure a lot of kits are like this, you need to know, do you have a disc brake or a drum brake spindle? And you just order it accordingly, so you get a drum brake spindle kit. Everything goes on to a factory drum brake spindle, and it works just great. So that's what we're going to do today. Get everything stripped apart. Whoa. Don't put your floor jacks. You're going to walk on them. And go from there. I did get a few bolts. Um, unfortunately, metric stuff. Either had too short or too long, so we got some washers. I guess I could shorten them and retap the ends. And one bolt there for the uh, header. So that's all taken care of. I did not get plug wires, which I meant to. There's always tomorrow for that. So I'm going to get all set up, get this kind of started taking apart, and uh, I'll bring you back when we're taking the wheels apart because that's the most important part of doing dip, uh, brakes is taking the brakes off. Uh, quick status update. Sun's going down. Got the master off, so it actually came off no issues. This right here is the rod. It's all covered never sees because I took it apart and cleaned it. This goes on the brake pedal. As you step on the brake, it pushes forward, which... This is in there is where the cylinder of the uh, master is, and this sits in there. So as you step on that, it pushes in and out, which obviously just has a little piston there, and it shoots fluid, whatever it may be. Now, these 
this is adjustable so this piece comes out so I clean it all up nice never seized it and that's a little lock on it jam nut so you want to have this nice and lubricated uh, some of the kits come with a new one this cheapy kit I buy does not you put it on there and then you'll have to loosen this out until it's just in the hole now you don't want any pressure on this cylinder in there like not at all you want it to be out just a little bit so actually when you step on the brake pedal you have to you're going to make contact with the cylinder before it starts pushing otherwise if it has just a little bit of resistance it'll hold pressure in the system slowly but surely your front brakes will lock up you're doing burnouts you're roasting the transmission it's not good so and typically i believe on this car anyways this does have to be in and kind of it sticks just out just a little bit so you want that on so you can kind of send her home because as you can see it does fit in here a little bit this one looks like it might be seized all the way in but still oh yeah for sure is. but it would still be in just a little bit and if you don't have this on first uh you won't be able to get in then around the back of the pedal so we'll get that set up we'll get it bolted on real quick and then we'll start ripping the uh drums off okay so let's peel this uh front end apart so pretty simple let's go on here it's got a cotter pin here and this big nut which will hold on the entire works which i can get off would be pretty sweet oh the cotter pin has two tails on it who'd have thought eh stupid eyes so get this out without breaking it well she might be coming out in two pieces she'll come out yep she broke so this cotter pin basically just holds the whole mess from coming loose. This big nut is uh, not supposed to be tight. We'll see how it goes. Mm, a little snug. There we go. Peel this off, and this thing is going to come apart in a hurry. As long as the brakes aren't so out of adjustment that it's fighting the drums. But I'm optimistic. I did the other side, it came off not too bad. In my experience, these nuts you want to keep. Sometimes the kits have kind of universal junk. What's that? I said, you just have to stand there and sit back right in the chair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, neighbor stopped by. Gotta keep them happy. So, anyways, like I said, the, the nuts off. This whole unit should. A little snug on the brakes. There we go. It's right off. Now you got your standard uh, brakes, drum brakes. Uh, I like to keep this stuff because it's the same on the front and the back, so if there's good parts, you can use them. And that. What else we got going on here? So, again, all we're trying to accomplish come on here, is keep the. Uh, the spindle, so we gotta take all this off. The, the only tricky part I found on this is the backing plate is held on with uh, four bolts and two of them can be a little bit of a pain. So, I don't know. Sometimes it's going really easy, sometimes you gotta put a little heat to them or a little screwing around. The most part, not too bad though. And really, you can kind of cut anything you want off here because we're not using any of it. On here. That's that. This will come off in one piece. Oh wow. This haven't been used in a while. Now the uh, wheel cylinder comes off. It's held on with this one kind of anchor bolt, which all the springs go to. You can. Uh, it's just one inch. If you had a deep socket, it's the best. I'm going to cut that off. But we'll see if it'll fit here. We'll cheat it and make it a medium deep nope I have to zip that yep
so the socket just wasn't deep enough to fit on there and wanted to bounce off. There we go. Junk. So now these are the four bolts I'm talking about that hold the backing plate on. And the bottom two actually hold the steering arm on. Those are the ones that can be just a bit of a pain. So I think we'll hit it with a little bit of heat. Just be a little preemptive. Uh, sometimes they get stuck in the spindle itself and everything and well for this tutorial we'll skip no no steps. Alright, now we've got the grease all nice and hot. With extra burning. Let's see what happens here. Inside the strip itself. So one's boned. Let's see who that one is. This one at least came off. That's hot. So we're in the market for some, uh, I think they're just 716s. But they got some, they got cotter pins in them with some locking uh, nuts tomorrow. We'll do the same thing. These top ones just hold on the back and place so there. I don't believe they go back on for anything. That's all good. Unfortunately, got the one here. We'll just zap it off with the uh, torch. So that's our steering arm, which we're going to end up reusing. That's the spindle. And right here, it's the race for the ball bearing. Should come up easy. There we go. That's hot, but we're gonna, we'll wipe that all down. The uh, disc brake kit, it uses a, like a bracket, which attaches to here, which will give you a new bolt for. I believe it goes into the back here with the, uh, the steering arm, gives you a spacer, it does something pretty simple. And that's it. And the, literally the new disc has everything all in it, so it just goes together. That's really it for tonight. I gotta look around and see if I have the back brake stuff. Uh, we might carry on with that tomorrow. I think I have uh, wheel cylinders and shoes, but I don't think I have parking brake stuff. 
to pull down the wagon. So I'm going to have to track that down. If I don't have it, I'll buy it. Hopefully I have it in stock. Because Rock Auto can't deliver in one day, unfortunately. It's not yet. Then we can get the back brakes dialed. We're waiting on the front brakes. And we're done. Brakes are done. Just that easy. All right, see you guys tomorrow. So that's been a couple of days. Um, still waiting on front brake parts. It's not, it's not going well. So I started on the rear brakes yesterday, but I had a whole lot going on. Um, I ended up buying a piece of equipment. And I just want to take a minute and thank everyone you guys that watches the channel and shares it with your friends and leaves a comment, likes the videos. You buy a shirt, you subscribe to the channel, you're a member, whatever it may be. Thanks. Because uh, the way it runs here is typically all the YouTube money I make. I save and I try and live off of my regular salary, which is lame. And we invest in cars and kind of grow on the channel and stuff like that. Well, I bought myself something. This is YouTube bought and paid for. I'm not doing any landscaping for you. I'm not clearing your snow, but uh, I do owe you guys a thanks. So it's a little tiny machine. I want one for a while now. This is going to help out big time. Loading stuff, moving stuff, moving dead cars around, dealing with snow, whatever it may be. A little bit of landscape, maybe next year. A little bit more room for the cars. So thanks again. Anyways, I that took most of my afternoon yesterday. It was dark. I started working a little bit in the garage. And took apart the rear brakes. And it was the same as the front. So I wasn't really filming it. I then smacked my finger, this one, with a hammer. Got cranky and thought, you know what? I'm gonna call her. Also, I took it all apart. I need the torch. It's all seized. But the uh, oh. can you see the groove in there? The drums are finished, so I had to go pick a set of drums up on the way home from work. I got that. I do have brand new uh, brake pads, and I think inside, you know, I should have checked, but I'm pretty sure I have wheel cylinders. So wheel cylinders. We have the e-brake cable. It's up there as well, right beside in that bag. I actually had it the whole whole time. I don't know why I thought I didn't have it. So we should be able to slap cable in, new shoes, new wheel cylinder, new drums. They'll be complete new front to back. Uh, then just a matter of plumbing them. So I think I might pause the video after I do that and start another video while I'm waiting on the front brakes because once the front brakes go on, I'll put the front clip on or ah, who knows what I'm gonna do. But uh, right now, we're gonna finish off these rear brakes. Well, it may not look like much because I didn't accomplish much tonight. And I didn't do any filming because, again, it's the same as we just did. But uh, new wheel cylinder. Put a new stud in where it needed one. We got uh, new shoes. These new shoes are always a pain. I always feel like I have to grind them all down so everything fits. Um, we used all the old springs, all the old hardware because it was just fine. I put on the e-brake cable. The old one's still hooked up under on the frame. This one's just hanging there, but it's in. It works. And then I bought brand new drums. I'm gonna do this one hand. Oh god. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. It's spinning. Yeah. You get the idea. The drum goes on. These ones were hammered. Took them off like they're. You see the grooves on that thing? I like the outer groove on the the outside. She wore out. So we got brand new ones on. So now this thing has like every piece of the braking system will be brand new. New master, new metering block, new front discs, all new lines, all new lines to the back. I'll have to build a line across. New wheel cylinders, new shoes, new drums, new e-brake cables. The only thing we reused was the backing plates. So, yeah, brakes are good. Last another lifetime of this vehicle. And I'm out of parts. So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause right now. Next time you see me, we'll be doing front brakes, but that won't be today or tomorrow. I'm going to start uh, taking well, things up on stands, take the fuel tank out, and work some other things. So I'll be on another video. Thanks for watching. Well, I guess I'll see you right away. Okay, so we're back to like the never-ending video here. Um, I actually did a bunch of work on the car. And I was filming on this new GoPro 10, and it didn't record any sound. So I am threw that camera in the garbage. Actually, I returned it. But uh, there's a bunch of stuff here to catch up on another video, but uh, fuel tank and all that is out. Well, then some suspension stuff. Anyways, my disc brake kit showed up. So that's sweet. So two discs, calipers, some mounting brackets, and some hoses. We should be able to knock this out pretty darn quick. We do have the car 
So we changed the jack snap position so it's on the weight. Um, so now I can kind of double, uh, you know, tighten all this stuff up, which I haven't done yet. With the brakes on, we'll tighten everything up. Actually, up on top there, it's a heater core. That just showed up from eBay. Overpaid, under-delivered, story of my life. Hoping we can jam that in real quick. Uh, set of spark plugs and plug wires. I can do it any time, but you know what? It's real easy to get in there right now. Well, it's all apart. Once we got that front clip on, and that's it. I gotta plumb it up. I don't know if we'll do that right now or not, but uh, we'll finally be done. So I get this unpacked, and we'll kind of just go over everything. Uh, I do have to pack some bearings and a few little things, but otherwise, it's a pretty quick procedure. Well, I tell you what, I have been fiddle farting around with this thing for an hour and a half. So, I got the same kit a bunch of times. I'm not a huge fan of the place it sells, but it's a good deal for what it is. Anyways, it's always been this is on back order, that's on back order, whatever. Anyway, so it comes, <clears throat> and it's kind of a miscellaneous stuff. They pull stuff off the shelf, obviously make a kit, send it out. So it shows up, there's no instructions in it this time. I didn't, no, no big deal, I've installed the same kit on try five, five, six times. I wasn't too worried about it. I pre-welded my tabs knowing how it all goes. Well this time I pull it out, and the brackets, where did I put the other one? I don't know where it did. It, oh here it is, is different. I noticed that right away, then, the kit previously, I'm like, huh, well, that's weird. Start looking around, go on the website, there's nothing there, and it turns out this is a CPP bracket. Like in the picture, it looks exactly like it. Okay, no big deal. But now it's a CPP bracket with all sorts of other stuff, all kind of jumbled together, which in turn puts a back, uh, the caliper on the back side, not the front side. So I guess it's COVID shipping and all that sort of stuff. Pain in the ass. And even though I changed the control arms and everything, the spindle's the exact same, so nothing else there changed. But we got her together, we got her lined out, now I know how it goes together on the other side pretty easily. I just gotta, well, I'm gonna leave that. They actually sent tabs, I'll weld a, a proper tab on the back side for the brakes. And the brakes will run around here instead of there, and the calipers will be in the back, which I know a lot of people always hate when it's on the front for some reason, even though it does the same. We got that, I put cotter pins and all the suspension, uh, control arms and all that, so that's all now 100% done. We have to wait on the on the suspension, so she's torqued up, ready to go. Uh, I don't know, maybe we'll lapse the other side real quick. Danny's cooking supper, so I gotta get, I got jam on it. Hopefully this one goes together fast. Uh, the only trick, pack the bearings. Uh, I'm sure I've done a, a bunch of videos, if you don't know, you know, uh, grease on the palm of your hand, kind of scoop it in there. Google a picture, it's pretty simple. These already have the races in them and everything. You put it together, knock a seal on the back, and slide together. The only issue was fitting how this bracket fit. I was trying to do it forward ways until I kind of found the right picture. So instructions would be nice when you uh, spend $500 on a brake kit. But, get that, I'll get the other side real quick. We'll uh, slam the plugs in and put the front clip on. Huh. All right, I mean, oh, I'm happy with it. I'm just cranky because it's different than I'm used to. I'm an old man, I don't like change.
Okay, so we got the brakes all together, then I went and had some supper. I came back out, I changed plugs on the one side. While I was in here, I was like, okay, I'm gonna change the heater core. Man, these tripod, well, 57s are so easy to change the heater core. There's this little piece right here, which fits on these little tabs, and has these little uh, push lock things. It's almost like a set of old school headlights, they snap in and out. So you pull that out, and then obviously that's heater core, it has this little bracket on, you undo the screws, one was rotten out. Unfortunately the bottom of the heater box is a little rotten, we'll just put a little bit of uh, duct tape, like ducting tape on that and be done with it. Um, I would assume, since that's all green, it's on the side with the hole in it, it had a bunch of you know mouse nests in there, this thing's probably a leaker. And the fact that it's brass, or whatever. Probably it's original or it was replaced many many years ago. So that's good. We actually went and did that. They aren't cheap They're like 150 or 80 or something like that dollars But uh, put it back together sandwich it together put that back on knock her together done uh, Set of plug wires Simple Do plugs on the other side and then we're ready for the front clip to go on. I think that's probably where we're gonna leave it We got a fair amount done a little bit of cleaning up the next video, because I lost all the sound on the video I was trying to start, we're going to do it again. So we'll do fuel tank and all that. I think I'll then plumb the brakes on that video because I need some content in it. But uh, that's the plan. You know, keep jamming, get her all slammed together. We'll struggle getting the clip on, a few nuts and bolts. Going together, it's good times. All right, we got the junk cleaned off the floor. I'm hoping this is the last time the front clip is off of this car. I can't see a reason why we can't do anything else with the, the fenders on, the rad in, start running all the lines. I don't think there's anything else. I'm hoping anyways. And honestly, I just am tired of seeing this out here. I don't want to see it on there. So, I'm going to wrestle that on real quick. Move a few more things. Maybe put a couple bolts in it. And then uh, I'm calling her. It's been a long one. Okay, front clips rassled on. I'm hoping it stays on. I don't think it should have to come off. We gotta find a heater for it, heater fan. Put some bolts in it. I'll do that tomorrow though on the next video. Like I said, we'll do the some of the brake stuff. It's actually a good thing I didn't do all the plumbing, so I was gonna put it to the front, which would have been wrong. I got to the back, so that's good. I'll explain everything that I did on the Last video, which I already started and isn't going to be out because there's no sound on it. So that's good. We should do fuel system, exhaust, maybe a drive shaft. Finish the brakes 100%. Put a rat in and we'll see what goes. It's the weekend. Get all sorts of stuff done. Alright guys, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, leave a comment if you made it this far and I'll see you on the next video. Tomorrow.